although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. The decision by the FBI to not recommend criminal charges against Hillary Clinton has thrown America on both sides of the political spectrum into a quandary, one that we have seen before, but perhaps not as in our electoral face as any time in recent memory. At a time in our national evolution where there are more people seeking to do us harm, larger groups using whatever means possible to inflict as much pain as they can, and greater numbers of killers who see their only aim in life to bring destruction to our shores, national security has never been more important. How then is the individual in charge of that security to be trusted when they have shown, she has shown, a wanton disregard for the rules and a cavalier attitude for the common sense necessary to ensure our safety? Why should those in charge of that security on the ground level trust such an individual? And why then should we not spend more time making dead certain that whomever seeks that leadership role knows what they're doing before we hand them the keys to our nation and our lives? Prepare your calls and comments as we venture forth. Get on the line now at 1-877-NEWSMAX. Let's get to our guest, former White House Homeland Security Advisor, counterterrorism expert for the Department of Defense. He held the same security clearance as Hillary Clinton and thus understands how this game is played. Welcome Michael James Barton to the hard line. Michael, thanks so much for being here. Briefly, if you would, though, when you say you held the same top security clearance as Hillary Clinton, would you give us just very briefly what that entails and what sort of demands are made upon you then? Sure. Uh, first, uh, you have a top secret clearance, which many people have, and then it goes above that into sensitive compartmented information. And then you even have a password clearance where only certain people are read into a program. It's limited to a very, very small number of people. Those for extremely sensitive um, programs. You have to handle this essentially inside of a vault. If it's not in a safe, it needs to be inside of a facility that's rated to be a safe. Um, you can't transmit it. You can't put it on any type of thumb drive. It's handled with extreme care because people's lives are at stake. Human assets are at stake. Um, critical uh, intelligence information is at stake, and you treat that extremely carefully. You said in your sentence right there, the words I picked out, you can't transmit it. Is that made very clear when it comes down to emails, when it comes down to any other form it's, of transmit not, that you can't do matter, it? It's not just a matter of that you shouldn't do it. You physically can't do it. The only way to take a top secret email and transmit it onto a, a, another e a, to an unclassified email system is to intentionally take it off the system by bypassing security protocols, by ignoring the uh, state of security protocols that are there. You actually would probably have to do some hardware changes or just simply type up the, the email itself um, uh, anew on the unclassified side. But if you're doing that, you know exactly what you're doing. You know that you are putting classified information onto an unclassified system. There's no jumping, there's no hacking involved here in the sense that these are closed systems. So and the only way to do it is to be very, very intentional about what you're doing. Michael, here's from the Washington Post. They say, unlike General Petraeus and others, Hillary Clinton's case lacked malicious intent or other nefarious elements. When you hear something like that, knowing the training you got, what you were told, when you talk about intent and people say she didn't have the intent to do it, it wasn't malicious, it wasn't nefarious, do you think, and this is going to be a tough one for you, Michael, but do you think, quite frankly, that if you did exactly the same thing that Hillary Clinton did, that you wouldn't be wearing an orange jumpsuit right now? I'd be in jail. I'd be in prison. Anyone who worked with me would be in prison. The military officers would have, had, would have lost their pensions. They would have gone to jail. Anyone would have gone to jail. And this whole idea of intent is a bit ridiculous. If you drive your truck into, if you're drunk and you drive your truck into oncoming traffic and you kill a family of five, nobody cares that you didn't intend to kill them, okay, if you're still dead. The statute is very specific that intent isn't um, included. The intent has nothing to do, either you did it or you didn't do it, even if you did it by mistake. It doesn't matter under the statute. And what the FBI director essentially did here is to rewrite the statute that Congress passed and a president signed right there on the podium yesterday. Just completely rewrote it. All right. Now, the House Speaker Paul Ryan has made it very clear about his level of trust for Hillary Clinton in the wake of this decision. Here's what he said. I was on the ticket in 2012. After the convention, you get the full, deep, classified information um, as part of transition, as part of 
uh, being a nominee. Um, I think um, the DNI, Clapper, should, should, should deny Hillary Clinton access to classified information during this campaign, given how she so recklessly handled classified information. Michael, about a half an hour ago, Loretta Lynch's office, the attorney general announced that trust is not a, par is not a part of this whole discussion here because they have said that this case is closed with no criminal charges. What do you think that says to the people like you who work at the ground level right now, who are charged with the security of the United States, and they see that this woman, this former Secretary of State, has gotten away with something that, as you just said, they'd be in jail for if they did it. It's a sign that we're slipping into a banana republic, Ed, unfortunately. And it saddens me, saddens me to say this, but when one person can essentially almost get away with murder, and the next person goes to jail for federal mattress tag removal violations, you don't have a democracy anymore. You have a banana republic. And so that's what it tells everyone, that you're going to go to jail if you do something wrong, but if the guy next to you does something wrong, he's going to skate because of ideology and political affinities. And this is not what we want in our country. This is going to lead to a very bad situation for us. Breaking down the rule of law is a little bit like not inoculating kids. Once, once enough uh, rules of law have been abandoned, you, you've lost your herd immunity, so to speak, and the system starts to break down. It's very scary. One eight seven seven Newsmax. If you want to join us and get a couple of comments here, let me switch gears very quickly because the president has announced that he is not going to withdraw as many troops from Afghanistan as he originally proposed. Here's what he said: I'm announcing an additional adjustment to our posture. Instead of going down to 5,500 troops by the end of this year, the United States will maintain approximately 8,400 troops in Afghanistan into next year through the end of my administration. The narrow missions assigned to our forces will not change. They remain focused on supporting Afghan forces and going after terrorists. Michael, what does this say to the intelligence community, the people who are involved in protecting us every day, when the president knows that he failed, they knows that our policies have failed in Afghanistan, there's still boots on the ground, and still to this day, the insurgents and the terrorists are making gains no matter what, an administration says. Well, it has to be demoralizing. If you've gone over there to Afghanistan, and I have not, to be clear, but if you've gone over to Afghanistan and you put your life on the line or you've, had, you've lost some friends or you've been wounded or, or, or whatever, and you see, what were you there for to begin with? Um, you know, Barack Obama, if I remember correctly, in the 2012 election, he was criticizing Mitt Romney for his Afghanistan plan. And Obama said, we're going to be out by 2014. Well, it's 2016, and he still has troops in Afghanistan. It seems like it's just more of a political tool um, to hit opponents with as opposed to a real strategy. Are you almost glad at this point that you're out? <laughs> I'm sorry? Are you almost glad at this point that you're out and you're not involved in what this is becoming? I, I wouldn't touch this administration's foreign policy with a 10-foot pole. I wouldn't be anywhere near it. it was, I knew it was going to be a disaster before they took office, and I'm sad to say that I was correct. I want to thank you, Michael James Barton, for joining us. Trust me, my friend, we're going to have you back again because you have been there. You know what goes on. And this is going to take a little education for the American people. Michael, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate that. Yeah, All right, one eight seven seven Newsmax. Let's go ahead and get some comments in here before we take a break. Ron from Fresno, California. Ron, you believe Hillary should have been charged, but the attorney general says no charges, nothing. Shut case and it's all over. Ah, uh, baloney. You know, she's about as crooked as they come. I wouldn't turn my back two feet in front of her. She should not be... Um, President of the United States. Well, but you're talking she about Hillary be, right now. But what be, about the fact? What about be, the fact, though, that the Attorney General says, "No, wait a minute. FBI says this. We're not going to bring any charges right now." How angry does that make you? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> Can't say this over the air, but it really upset me. I, I knew it was coming. I was hearing it, and I was banging my head against the wall. Actually, it made me sick to my stomach. We'll have to get the way of the way everything is going here, Ron. We'll have to get everybody a chalkboard here so they can write it in, and we can then just go ahead and put the deleted, deleted, deleted on what they think about this. Thanks so much for the phone call. Kim is in Ontario, Oregon. Let's see, Kim. The Hillary investigation should have been handled like Watergate, where they brought in special prosecutors. Thirty seconds. Explain that. 
Well, I mean, all the people who helped her and assisted in her, this isn't simply like, oh, I charged, you know, these flowers accidentally. This is our nation's security. And it should have been handled um, without any reeking of nepotism, which this reeks of. And I'm disappointed on both sides. One side accepting her story because they want to be politically, um, uh, you know, they want to be politically correct. Everybody her, wants to keep the their jobs right now. That's really what it is. Everybody wants to keep their certain people want to keep their jobs in Washington, D.C. That's what it all comes down to. Thanks so much for your phone call. All right, we'll continue this because here's the question Are we smart enough to learn from presidential history about what we face with our current choices for president? We'll talk about that and much more when we continue right here on the hard line.